All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing another fly tying video. And today we're gonna to be tying uh, my version of the green blowtorch. I've been using this fly all the way through September and October. And I don't think that this fly and that little beta nymph that I tied a, a few videos back has left my rig since. I mean, just these two flies all fall have been super killer for me, but definitely this blowtorch has been a lot better than the betas even. So I'm gonna show you my version of how I tie my blow torches, And I tie these in green and orange the same exact way. Just swap out the colors basically. So before we get started here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. Go ahead and smash the like button. Let's me know that you guys wanna see more fly tying videos like this. And then leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this pattern if you're gonna tie some for yourself as well. And uh, let's go ahead and get into looking at the materials and then we'll go ahead and tie the fly. All right, so for the thread on this fly, we're gonna be using Vivas ADOT. The color code is E17. It's sort of like a fluorescent green, but any green thread that you choose to use will do. The body of this fly is made from this Hens Spectra dubbing. The color code for this stuff is 239. It doesn't really have like a color name, but it's sort of like an olive flash. For the tail of this fly and sort of like the blowtorch look, I actually prefer to use deer hair just because it's a lot stiffer and once it's underwater, it doesn't move around a lot. The ribbing of this fly is actually made up of two different materials. The first being this pearl crystal flash and the second part being small green ultra wire. For the hackle, I like to use a piece of brown rooster hackle, but any hackle will do for this fly. For the hook, I'm using a size 14 Orient Sun 5241, but I also tie this fly in size 16 and 18 as well. And last but not least, the bead is a 3.3 millimeter slotted tungsten bead in silver. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this fly. All right, so to start this fly, we're gonna go ahead and put our hook in the vise here upside down, and then just grab our bead and pop that on here. This just makes it a little bit easier to get that bead on. And then we'll go ahead and flip over our hook and secure it in the vise here. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and grab your thread and get that situated on your bobbin here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start our thread here at the front of the fly and just start working our way backwards and then you can come in and snip off that tag end and then just finish working your thread back to the bend in the hook. And once you have your thread at the bend in the hook, we're gonna go ahead and grab our deer hair here. I just like to take a little pinch here. I'd say probably about 10 or 15 fibers. And then we're gonna come in with our scissors and snip that off. And then we're gonna get these ready to tie in as the tail of this fly. So we're gonna go ahead and secure our deer hair to the hook here with a little pin trap. And then once you get those situated, you can start working your thread towards the top of the fly. I like to keep all the fibers in just so the entire fly stays even. And then once you start getting towards the bead up here, they start to fray a little bit. But I just like to straighten them out with my fingers and then come in and snip them off close. And then we'll go ahead and just tie down the rest of those ends. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and work your thread back to where we tied in the deer hair. And then I like to snip my deer hair off just about flush with the back of the hook. Next, we're gonna get the first part of our rib, which is our green ultra wire. Depending on how many of these flies you're tying at once, you can cut off more, but I'm just gonna cut off a small little piece here. Once we have our piece of ultra wire cut, we can go ahead and start securing that to the fly here. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab the second piece of our rib, which is our pearl crystal flash. Once you have the piece of crystal flash, you can go ahead and secure that here to the hook just like we did with the ultra wire. And then once you have those both secured there, we're gonna go ahead and get the dubbing for the body of this fly. I like to actually pull out a little bit more dubbing than I think I might use for the body because it's a little bit easier just to pull some off at the end if I have too much. Then we'll go ahead and create ourselves a nice little thin dubbing noodle. And I really like this hens dubbing because it's really easy to make a dubbing noodle out of. Once your dubbing noodle is created, you can go ahead and start wrapping that up the fly. And I actually like to leave mine a little bit away from the bead just so that we have room to tie in the hackle. 
Then we're gonna go ahead and take our crystal flash and start wrapping that clockwise up the fly. And depending on how big the body of your fly is, you're probably gonna make about four or five turns of it. And then we'll go ahead and just tie that off with our thread. And once we have that secured down, we'll go ahead and snip off the excess. Next, we're gonna take the ultra wire and we're actually gonna counter wrap that up the fly. This just helps with the durability and protecting that crystal flash. And then here, I like to crisscross the wire and then wrap it backwards. This helps pull the wire tight and then crisscross the thread back and then just finish it off. And once you have tight thread wraps, you can come in and helicopter off your wire there. Next, you wanna prepare yourself a piece of tackle that's correct for your hook size that you're using. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that already show you how to do this, so I'm not going to go into details on that, but go ahead and just start wrapping your hackle here. I like to do about three or four turns, and because this is a nymph, I don't get super technical with the wraps. And then I just come in and tie off the feather, and then come in and snip the excess of it off. And then what I like to do here is I just get my fingers and pry back all those fibers and just make wraps in front of them until they're all pointing backwards. And because we're giving this fly a hot spot, it helps clean up the front of the fly and give it a much more clean look. So I just like to work the hot spot there until I have most of those fibers cleaned up. And then we'll come in with our whip finish tool and give it a three, four turn whip finish. Pull tight and then we can come in with our scissors and snip off the thread and then like I like to do with all my flies I give them all a little bit of UV cure on the thread wraps just to help with durability so we'll go ahead and do that now and once we finish up with that the fly will be complete but like I said at the beginning of this video this fly has been super killer for me this fall I think it does a really good job at imitating some caddis and just maybe some like green inchworms or something that falling from trees and then the hackle on it does like a good job of maybe imitating some sort of like hatching caddis but that's going to be it for this one don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this in the future go ahead and smash the like button lets me know that you guys want to see more fly tying videos like this and then leave a comment let me know what you think of this pattern and if you're going to tie any yourself and let me know if there are any other patterns that you'd like to see me tie on the channel as well. And until next time, peace.